Now, while we're still talking about some of this advanced testing, we're going to talk about a coil on plug and ignition testing. Now, the reason we come here is you have tried your routine diagnostics, as in the last example we're working with, where we saw the voltage was low at B+. Let's look at other ways we can look at this. And yes, this is all advanced testing. We're going to look at a combination of voltage and current testing and go through the secondary ignition a little bit. Coil unplug testing is much like any other. It's just a specialized test. We may require some additional diagnostics and adapters and things, but we're going to do the same thing. The questions we have to answer is, does the ignition coil receive full B+, and does it produce a good spark? We might also ask, is current flow normal? And does the secondary insulation deliver the spark without leaking the ground? Those may sound like simple questions, but they're not. We want to try to look at tests where we can look at a group of things and answer all these questions at once. And to do that, we're going to use some advanced diagnostics, and we're going to do more with our lab scopes. Back to review again. Coil on plug. Here's an example of what we have. We have a system where B plus comes in from the fuses and goes to all the different coils. We can test B plus here. We also have to be able to supply ground. And in this case, it's a two-wire coil on plug. Two-wire coil on plugs, the computer supplies the ground. There's variations. Two-wire, and then there's three and four-wire. Three and four-wire use a control signal, and the module itself, the coil on plug, supplies the ground. In this case, the PCM has to supply the ground. We've talked about that before. When the PCBM has to supply the ground in the two-wire, keep in mind it has to come all the way from battery negative, all the way back through the PCM, through the coil, back to B plus, for there to be full current flow. So if current flow is low, we've got a variety of things that can cause current flow to be low. The test is usually done at individual coil on plugs. Now, some people recommend going out and testing at the fuse. The problem with this is this particular fuse and this specific diagram, and how many times have we said use a vehicle-specific diagram. Fuse, F30, 30-amp fuse, kind of high for a couple coils. It delivers amperage, current flow, to uh, other devices that are connected to the EEC power relay, as we see down there below. So when we measure there, we're going to look at a number of things. That's not to say we can't still measure there, but it's going to be confused with a lot of other signals, and it may be difficult to interpret. So when we can use the fuse, use it because we can compare a number of coils at one time. But beware that it's not going to be supplying power somewhere else. We've been there before. Let's look at a current waveform, a typical one, and there's a variety of different ones. But they all share one thing in common. They all must have inductance lag. Inductance lag is when we hit a coil with a current flow, it builds a magnetic field. This building magnetic field fights the current flow and causes it to increase slowly. It's also going to fight to keep it going. Inductors oppose any change in current flow. They fight the increase in current flow just as hard as they fight the stoppage of current flow. So what we're looking for is a slight slope going upwards. Once it straightens out, like in this area here, and goes straight up, it's strictly resistance. We're looking at the resistance of the coil once we reach that point. So the things we're going to look at has to have this shape, first and foremost. The one on the right, we say is a bad pattern. But actually, that one still produces a spark. But at the beginning, we're missing some of our inductive lag. Looks at the one on the left. It slopes up to the right. This one starts off first, develops a slope. What this is telling me is there still is some coil resistance here. It does produce spark. Not as much as we want is we're going to see one where it has almost no inductive lag. This is a completely shorted. This particular coil on plug produces no spark. What are we looking at? On the right, we're finding a coil on plug that's going to go bad. On the left, we found one that is bad. Now remember, 
what we're trying to do here is not only diagnose things, we're trying to predict things that are going to fail in the near future. We don't need to wait till we have a complete short. Well, we can find it by simply changing the coil on plug unit. We have no clue on the right that we have excessive current, that we have missing inductive lag, because it is still producing a spark. It is not yet generating a misfire code. Get where we're going? These diagnostics are to find those problems that you can't fix by swapping a coil because either you don't know to swap it or it's something beyond the coil and plug unit causing the problem. So let's look at the signals. The action of any ignition system is best observed by looking at primary and secondary ignition systems. They're great. These ignition systems have information about the spark inside the combustion chamber and we're going to have a whole section in here just talking about looking at the spark because that's really important. Let's say we're going to hook up to a two-wire system out here. We're going to come in here and this is what we're going to have. We have amps. It's going up at the top in the red pattern. At the bottom is our secondary ignition. You see what's happening to the secondary if you've ever seen secondary patterns. We'll talk more about that later. But the secondary voltage is in thousands of volts. And we can talk about that. Now sometimes we have missing signals. Here's the series of events. They all look pretty good except that was missing. There's a little hump there. That little hump says there was a PCM command, but we had no current flow. Something's wrong in this circuit. Now that may simply be a coil on plug unit, and it's easily fixed. Let me show you something a little more confusing. Look here. There is no change. There was no command. The PCM did not command current flow. We have a missing event. A missing event because the PCM chose not to have one. You now you might say, why would the PCM decide not to fire the ignition system? It makes this decision when it's trying to control temperature when we have an overheat indicated by a cylinder head temperature, or in some cases, some sophisticated systems, when they have catalyst damaging misfires, will shut off the spark and the fuel to the misfiring cylinder after it's identified as being bad. Others reduce, cut out cylinders occasionally to reduce torque when they cannot control automatic transmission functions as they desire. Just keep in mind, when it's totally missing, and we didn't see any attempt, this is missing because the PCM decided it should be missing. We need to go find out why it was missing. Do you notice that you wouldn't solve any of these problems necessarily by swapping out parts? Let's take a look at a four-wire system. This four-wire system has a control signal and has amperage. Then we have the secondary down at the bottom. The secondary goes over and produces a spark at the end. That blue signal, this is on a three and four-wire control system. Two-wire we just looked at, the red current flow is controlled by the PCM turning current off and on. PCM requires good ground for current to be normal. Okay, so let's go ahead and readjust our scope talk about what else can be viewed here. We're looking for our slope. We're looking for the max against variation. Let's get down to testing. Our spec on this particular vehicle is 9.5 to 10.5 amps, but we're too low. If our current is too low, we need to find out why. Let's go have a look at current on. We should have a good ringing when the current turns on. If it's missing, check for a weak coil. Now, this is our four-wire or three-wire on GM. We've got an individual uh, coil, we've got a plug wire, and we have a spark plug. If we want to look at secondary ignition, we can take a standard secondary ignition pickup and hook to that plug wire. Now, I'm showing you this because if you really want to get a good pattern, many of the uh, coil on plug adapters do not give us good ignition patterns. You can always duplicate this system by separating the coil from the plug putting a short wire in like this and using a standard pickup. But let's look here again. We've got four wires. This one has four different wires. What's the circuitry look like? Well, first of all, on the left, you notice there's B plus with a big splice. Good news is we have a fuse, injector fuse A, that supplies ignition coils. It also supplies the injectors, which are not shown in this diagram. Be careful of these wonderful diagrams 
frequently they leave out stuff. But for the current to be right, if it's wrong on all coils, look for common area, the splice, the system going back to injector A, fuse. That must be right. But notice also on the left side, we have a ground. In this particular case, the ignition coils supply their own ground. If current is low, it's on this side of this diagram. Let me say that again. If there's a problem with B plus or ground, current flow will be low. It's right here. It's between this side. On the right side is all control signals and reference ground. So we're going to talk about this over here. Reference ground is there. Reference low is another name for it. It acts as a ground for our reference signal for our ignition control at 1, 3, 5, and 7. So those, that ground over there is not a power ground. It's a signal ground. Power ground is on the left. We're showing you this because testing varies greatly. People say, well, if coil unplug current is too low, go check the PCM grounds. In this case, that would not apply. You need to know what you're working on. We're going to control each coil, and here's where we go test it. Hook our stuff up, check B+, check the control signal. The negative lead is going to be an engine ground. As we said, two different scales, voltage and amps. You see they turn on together. They follow along. If the control signal isn't here, as we showed you before, go look at the PCM. Now, what we're looking for in this particular vehicle, we're looking for 4.8 to 5.3, and we look at our scope pattern up here, and it says we're right at 5 amps. Right on the money. We know B+, plus ground is good. We are done with our test on this particular unit. But this 5 amps tells us ground and power is normal. Here's an important thing for you on GM and some other manufacturers. This signal is, is a signal to a switching transistor. We have found, and people from the field have told us repeatedly, if this signal drops under 4 volts or right at 4 volts, you will get a misfire. Replacing the coil and its associated electronics inside will correct this problem. Now, this is unique to 3 and 4 wire coil on plug units. Remember... We don't have this signal on two wire. Get the idea? We need a little bit of more information. We can go over here if we have a current flow problem uh, and look on the left side, check for our B plus, check for ground, and make sure everything is normal. If they're wrong, we can go check the resistance of the coil and see if they're good. Check the resistance by going A to D. We stay on the left side of the diagram when we have low current in this particular application when you see this type of, of arrangement. Now, one other thing you're going to see that's unusual is multi-strike ignition systems that have multiple sparks at idle. Now, let's tell you a little bit about these multiple sparks. Right now, you see three of them. Sometimes you'll find one or two. This is not wrong. This is just simply an idle speed where it doesn't have time to fire three. When we judge our current for our ignition, we use the first pulse because the second pulses may not be the same height or if we come off idle, we'll only have one pulse. Systems look like this. They may have various amounts in the second and third strike. It's the first one we use to judge it by. The second and third one really are this there to improve emissions. The ignition is started by the first one. So here we are under normal conditions. We're going to see this and see our normal current flow. We're looking at 7.6 amps. Our spec is 6.5 to 7.7. .7. We're right on the money. We know that everything is good on this particular one. Now, maybe this will show you some things that you need to look at. When we look at multiples, when we have lucky enough, we can get a look at multiples. We have three different things going on here. The right is an example of goes over 10 amps. Notice it's straight up. There's almost no inductive lag. Yes, we go too high, it's straight up, but what about this one over here? We're looking for something around 6.5, and we're right at the borderline on this coil. We should be up closer to 7.5 like the other one. We're not there. The middle is a good coil on plug. What do we know when we see three things like this? First of all, if we've got excessive current on the right, we don't have a ground or B-plus problem. Let me say that again. Whenever we see excessive current, like we have on the right, 
we don't have a problem with low V-plus or a bad ground. We already have one that has too much ground. This go back to a pattern we were talking earlier. You observe what's normal, understand what the, the readings give you, and what that tells you about the normal part of the circuit. Now, that doesn't say we can't have low power or a bad connection on this particular coil at the first one, but we need to go investigate it. We need to find out why. Two wire systems, we know it has to go all the way back around, go from B plus through the coil, through the PCM, back to the PCM ground, back to the negative. It tests slightly different than the three wire. You saw what we can find by looking at these. Let's see what else we can do. Here's a four wire we're doing some testing on. We have a coil with excessive current. Notice here it's up near 15 amps. On the left is our normal. We're expecting to see under 10. Yellow trace is our control signal for a four wire GM type system. It goes over four volts. That part's good. But look here. Our spike at the bottom is less than 1,000 volts. We had inductance. It went up at an angle. We think it looks good. Current's too high. We have no spark. But we know the control signal is good. People ask us, why would you look at three things at once? I hope this answers the problem of why we would look at three things at one time. Let's take some time next to go look at some of these signals more. But this secondary voltage spike is really important. This secondary voltage spike is very small. It tells us something is going on. We need to talk more about the secondary voltage when we turn this current flow off. We said this slope upwards is because we're opposing a change in starting current. When we stop the current, we're going to create a voltage spike which is going to produce the spark. That'll be our secondary ignition, and we'll go talk about that next.